It's game week for the Miami Hurricanes, and head coach Mario Cristobal just announced the best news of the week. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, if there is such a thing. I'm Alex Dono, your host, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Finally, the bye week has come to an end. Hurricanes will host the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets this Saturday, 8 p.m., back home at Hard Rock Stadium. But the best news of the week so far, my I know the week is early, but this is this is really good news, okay? This morning, on his weekly appearance on the Joe Rose Show on WQAM in Miami, head coach Mario Cristobal confirmed all-American safety, Cam Kinchins, he's back. Cam is 100% ready to play on Saturday against Georgia Tech. Uh, this is something that we talked about at the end of last week. It was my strong suspicion that Cam would be back. I didn't think it was a coincidence that they were using Kinchins in all the promotional materials for the Miami Knights uniforms, the black and neon alternate, alternate jerseys they're going to wear this weekend. And it was officially confirmed by coach today. Remember back at the Texas A&M game, very end of that game was when Kinshin suffered that scary collision, uh, passed all of his tests at the hospital. Everything is okay. They held him out for the last couple of weeks, primarily out of an abundance of caution, which is great. But Kinshin's is healthy and number five is ready to go again this week. So not only are the Hurricanes getting the best player on the team back from injury this week, who also happens to be the quarterback of their defense. Cam Kinchins is also the guy that intercepted Georgia Tech three times last year. I know it was a different Georgia Tech quarterback last year, but I'm pretty sure Brent Key and you know the players who were on the team last year still have nightmares about what Cam did. He had a pick six included in that what Cam Kinchins did against Georgia Tech last year. He, yeah, he was, he was fantastic, okay? And, you know, something this is going to make us watch for this week because Kinchins is, he's so important to this football team. Um, we've been critical over the past couple of games about Miami's past coverage, being a little sloppy, a little soft at times. But now that Miami's getting Cam back, we're going to get a better idea of who Miami truly is in that defensive backfield. And, we're going to say a lot of things about Georgia Tech and what happened to them this past week, but they've had a prolific passing offense so far. Like Georgia Tech has been able to complete passes down the field, put up big time passing stats. Uh, that's been one area of Miami's defense where, you know, it's not been maybe as good as the rushing defense, for example, which is number one in the country. But with Cam back, we're going to get a better idea of who Miami truly is in the defensive backfield. Now, on to Georgia Tech. Oh, man. So you guys know me. I try so hard to be respectful of every single opponent, and I try to give you reasons why that opponent can give Miami trouble and be dangerous against Miami. I'm, I'm not the guy who comes out and talks trash every week like, hey, that team sucks. We're going to beat them up. They're terrible. Miami's going to win by 50. I'm not that guy. I try to be respectful of every opponent. But Georgia Tech is making that really tough for me right now. So last week, before their game on Saturday, they played Saturday, Miami didn't. Last week, we were praising Georgia Tech's top 25 passing offense and talking about how their quarterback, Haynes King, used to be a Texas A&M Aggie. He's really helping them build a new identity on offense. But this past Saturday, on their home field, mind you, Georgia Tech lost 38 to 27 to checks notes. Bowling Green. The Bowling Green Falcons put up 438 yards and 38 points against Georgia Tech's defense. 
And Georgia Tech turned the football over three times on offense, including two interceptions by their quarterback, Haynes King. And, you know, the stat that is the most glaring, when you talk about it, I titled the episode today, Miami's Big Advantage, right? When you look at Miami's Big Advantage heading into this football game, Miami's rushing offense against Georgia Tech's run defense, if they even have one. The Yellow Jackets now have the 103rd ranked scoring defense in the country and the 128th ranked out of 130 the 128th ranked rushing defense in America. Georgia Tech gives up 236 rushing yards per game. Miami averages 222 and a half rushing yards per game with their offense. So this is a, an ugly matchup on paper for Georgia Tech's running defense, right? So this week, you know, they, they gave up all those yards last week to Bowling Green, 175 rushing yards. This week, Georgia Tech matches up a team matches up against a team with a physical offensive line, a four-headed running back attack, and Miami has the ninth-ranked rushing offense in the country. Hurricanes put up 323 rushing yards against Temple. It might get really ugly for Georgia Tech this week when it comes to the ground game, stopping Miami's, that is. Now, for Miami's rushing attack, we don't know yet 100% uh, if Henry Parrish is like fully back because, again, when Mario Cristobal talked injuries on the Joe Rose show this morning, the only one he talked about was Cam Kinchins. He didn't talk about, you know, the other guys who have been a little bit banged up. Uh, he only talked about Cam. Cam is going to be back. We don't know for sure what Henry Parrish's status is. He got banged up late in the Temple game. Uh, even if he's not 100%, Don Chaney has been ascending lately. Mark Fletcher, his power is going to give Georgia Tech fits because they don't have enough physicality in the interior of their defensive line to match up with a guy like Fletcher or guys like Matt Lee and Inez Cooper and Javion Cohen. Uh, we get this question from our guy Trey on our subtext chat, who brings up another interesting angle from the Georgia Tech point of view. Because uh, again, Georgia Tech got smoked by Bowling Green at home this past weekend. And Trey writes to us, Hey, with Georgia Tech demoting their defensive coordinator, how does that affect the Hurricanes game plan? And so, OK, that's worth pointing out. Georgia Tech's offense has been so bad or sorry, their defense has been so bad to start the year. Uh, they just demoted Andrew Thacker, who was their uh, primary defensive coordinator and play caller. They demoted him. And they have named Kevin Scherer, who is already on the staff, as now the sole defensive coordinator and defensive play caller. So how does that affect Miami's game plan? I don't think it does because I think Miami still, they scheme more against personnel. I think it's the way Miami's going to look at it. They're going to find advantages more against the Jimmys and Joes of Georgia Tech versus the X's and O's. But it's definitely, listen, first of all, um, I think for Georgia Tech's defensive players, you get your defensive coordinator demoted that's embarrassing for them so they're going to want to respond from that and you know you've got a new defensive play caller now in Georgia Tech and this Kevin Scherer has got some experience he's coached at a lot of SEC schools so he's got quality experience um, obviously he's going to give them I'm sure some different play calling and schematic looks than uh, the previous defensive play caller did but uh, I don't think it's necessarily because Miami doesn't really know what to expect there. So I think their approach is going to be the same. They're going to try to attack the soft spots of Georgia Tech's defense. And there are a lot of those. There are a lot of soft spots on Georgia Tech's defense. We have some really important recruiting notes when we come back. We have a, a confirmed blue chip visitor. Well, a couple of them, a couple of confirmed blue chip visitors for the Georgia Tech game this weekend. So you want to keep it locked right here. So we like to say we are only getting started on this Monday episode of Locked on Canes. My friends, it's time now for your Game Changer of the Week brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. And yes, our Game Changer this week is Cam Kitchens, Miami's All-American safety, who's already got an interception and 11 tackles this year despite only playing in two games to start the season. Top safety in the country last year per Pro Football Focus. Cam Kinchins is back from injury, and yeah, this is a guy who dominated Georgia Tech last year. He's going to try to do that again. Mr. Kinchins is our game changer of the week, and much like Cam Kinchins, Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, guys. 
they are constantly releasing limited edition experimental styles to add to their variety. They're fit for all time, so you can drink them anytime, anywhere, and make any activity even more enjoyable. There are no hangovers ever. You can find Athletic in-store, online, and at bars around the country. They are the fastest-growing non-alcoholic brewery in the U.S., so get on board. Guys, first-time customers can use code Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's Locked On, code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. Use that code at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today on this Monday. Thank you for being an everydayer. And for the everydayers, if you want to take your everydayer experience to the next level, sign up for our exclusive text messaging community through subtext. I include the link in the show description below if you want to try it out. You get text messages directly from my phone to yours with recruiting scoops, one-on-ones. You can ask me questions on there, breaking news. And a lot of the questions you guys send me on the subtext are questions we answer on the show. We're going to be answering some of, some of those in a bit. So if you want to try it free for 14 days, Click the link in the show description below. And then if you like it, after two weeks, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there. So check out our exclusive subtext channel. When the Miami Hurricanes take on Georgia Tech this weekend, which is a night game, by the way, under the lights, 8 p.m., Hard Rock Stadium. Miami's going to be where I think they look cool. Some of you are like, I don't like them, Dono. But I, I think the jerseys look really cool. And I'm not even a big jersey guy, but I think the Miami Knights, black and neon green, I think they look really cool. They're going to look really nice in a night game. So 8 p.m. this Saturday, and we've got some important recruiting visits coming up. Now, one of those was just made official over the weekend. Uh, so ever since four-star receiver Nye Carr decommitted from Georgia eight days ago, Miami has been the most aggressive in pursuing a verbal commitment from Carr. Um, this is a player out of Colquitt County in Georgia, very, very shifty, fast, playmaking slot receiver. His skill set would perfectly fit in Shannon Dawson's offense because he's very comparable to Tank Dell, who you see now doing great things with the Houston Texans. But before that, he was with the Houston Cougars playing under Shannon Dawson, and Dell was absolutely thriving. Uh, I think Nye Carr is a, a similar type of player. And so Nye Carr... He has now locked in a game day visit for Miami this weekend, Saturday night against Georgia Tech. So he's going to be in the recruiting section. And so will Jeremiah Smith. Jeremiah Smith is going to be there. And like, I know everyone's trying to read the tea leaves. Like, how come all these Miami recruits keep tweeting out these pictures of, of Kevin Beard? Like, does that mean Miami's about to flip Jeremiah? Does that mean Miami's about to land Nye Carr? Hopefully the answer to both of those questions is yes. <laughs> but, you know, important wide receivers are going to be at the game visiting this weekend. So that's another reason why. And I think Miami Miami should be able to offensively establish their identity by just running down Georgia Tech's throat. But even in games where they've been able to do that, I mean, they just ran for 323 against Temple. They still hit big plays in the passing game. Shannon Dawson, Miami's offensive coordinator, has shown so much balance so far this year. So. Even if the Hurricanes have tremendous success running on Georgia Tech, you can you can still expect Tyler Van Dyke to be hitting some plays down the field to not only the usual suspects like Xavier Restrepo, who's the top rated receiver in the country right now, Colby Young, Jacoby George, the human touchdown machine. Hopefully we see guys like Tyler Hero or Tyler Harrell. <laughs> Tyler, I got Miami Heat on the brain now. Tyler Harrell and Isaiah Horton. We get them more involved. Ray Ray Joseph. Because obviously, when you've got people like Jeremiah Smith and Nye Carr visiting the game, you got to flex the passing game a little bit as well. Uh, now, big picture, where does Miami stand right now? Even though Miami didn't play over the weekend, they still managed to move up a spot in the polls. So our Hurricanes in the AP poll have moved up from number 18 to number 17. And that move up was aided by losses to Duke, LSU, and Utah. Those teams losing allowed... Ole Miss, Oregon State, who both of those teams got big wins, and Miami, who didn't even play. All three of those teams were able to move up because of that. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about, um, you know, Georgia Tech suffering a, just a really ugly loss at home 
to Bowling Green. Um, the reaction to that Georgia Tech loss, I think, has impacted the betting odds so far. So the Hurricanes opened up as 20-point home favorites this week against Georgia Tech. Basically, you're giving three touchdowns at home. I would, prior to the Bowling Green game, I would have expected that number to be more around somewhere between 14 and a half to 16 and a half in Miami's favor. But I think Georgia Tech really lowered their stock against Bowling Green. And, you know, that's why they decided to put the number where it is. But again, when it comes to my team, I don't care so much about the spreads. I just want Miami to win and hopefully look good and stay healthy doing it because, yeah, obviously the games only get even tougher from the here on out. After this Georgia Tech game, you've got North Carolina and Clemson in consecutive weeks. But the Hurricanes have opened as 20-point favorites against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Let's get to some more questions. And again, you guys have been writing in on our exclusive subtext SMS texting community. Click the link in the show description below if you want to try it out for two weeks completely free. War Beast asks, hey, uh, this team has proved to be discipline, a week-to-week discipline squad, talking about Miami. With that said, what traps are out there potentially looming against Georgia Tech? Thank you. Um, Okay, so I I got a couple that come to mind. If Miami wasn't productive and focused enough during their bye week, bye weeks used to be a big problem here, right? Miami always used to look bad coming out of bye weeks, right? Now, the Hurricanes, they did get a little more time off than usual. For example, the players got together on Saturday to watch college football. They don't usually get to do that because they typically play on Saturdays, and it sounded like Tyler Van Dyke and Cam Kinchins were the ones who organized that get-together, so good leadership by them. Uh, They also they did practice during the bye week, practiced pretty hard, maybe not as hard as usual, but they did practice. Uh, And it sounds like Mario Cristobal felt like some of the players who haven't been playing as much in games looked pretty good in practice. So more competition developing. Hopefully everyone mentally worked hard, ate right, didn't, you know, let themselves go too much during the bye week because focus, focus coming out of the bye week has been a big problem at Miami in recent years. Uh, I trust Mario Cristobal did not let that be a problem this time around. And then the other part of that is, okay, it'd be one thing if you were coming out of the bye week and playing Florida State or or Clemson, you know, you wouldn't worry about taking an opponent lightly. But everything I just said about Georgia Tech, how bad they looked last week, you cannot take your opponent lightly, okay? That's something Miami cannot afford to do. Tyler Van Dyke talked about this preseason with us that, you know, Miami learned last year, like in a game like Middle Tennessee, you learned last year that you can't just expect to show up with a U on your helmet against inferior teams and automatically win. Every W needs to be earned. These guys learned that with some of the tough losses that they had last year. Hopefully they never let something like that happen again. So War Beast, I hope that answers your question. Get a question from Steve in Port Orange, Florida, who says, So, hey, Miami has motivation for revenge against North Carolina and Clemson. Do you think they might find themselves looking ahead this week and struggle against Georgia Tech because of that? So similar question to the previous one. Uh, And no, I, I don't think that Miami's coaching staff or their leadership at this point allows them to look ahead. Uh, I think they're so focused week to week. I think the bigger goal should be to win this week, win comfortably, take care of your business, and then hopefully, you know, you're into the top 15 for a major undefeated matchup against North Carolina. Not that I I care about the rankings. Miami players don't. They just want to show up and win every week. But I just I don't feel like this staff and the leadership will allow these guys to be looking ahead to North Carolina when, you know, they've got Georgia Tech right in front of them. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, 818 Cali Kane asks, what are your keys to the month seeing Miami potentially come out of October four and zero with two upset wins versus North Carolina and Clemson? So w- what are my keys to Miami coming out of October undefeated? Uh, big one. You got to stay healthy. You cannot afford any key injuries during this run of games coming up against North Carolina. And again, I'm looking ahead. I don't want to do this. I know the players aren't looking ahead. I'm, I'm going to look ahead just for just for the sake of this question. Against North Carolina, Miami should be the more physical overall team. You have to flex that. Against Clemson, the physicality is more of a wash, but Miami, specifically on offense, can be more explosive than Clemson is right now. So against North Carolina, 
establish your physicality against Clemson, establish your speed and, exp and explosiveness. Uh, and by the way, you talk about the word upset. Depending on how the next two games play out for Miami, I'm not certain that Clemson would be considered an upset win for Miami. If Miami goes undefeated into that game, they probably would be favored at home for what that's worth. All right, we got more recruiting questions. We got questions about tight end usage. We got questions about Tyler Van Dyke, top graded quarterback in the country right now. Uh, what holes we still have in the 2024 recruiting class. We're having fun and we're not done. Alex Dono with you guys. Monday episode of Locked on Canes. You want to keep it locked. Oh, I hope you're keeping it locked to FanDuel. Another fun NFL weekend in progress. Snap in to NFL action this season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in, on, get in on the action than right now. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. We mentioned Miami currently 20-point favorites at home against Georgia Tech heading into this weekend. If you want to check that out, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Thank you so much to the everydayers. And for the everydayers, uh, make sure every Saturday, I know each week more and more people are, are watching the show and listening to it. Make sure every Friday you check out Locked on College Football Kickoff Live. I'm part of that show, and it's an honor, and it's a great time. From 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. live every Friday, we take you through all the big storylines, all the big games, game picks, Heisman race, hot seats for coaches. It's not looking great for G5 Billy right now. We call him LinkedIn Billy up in the swamp because he's updating that LinkedIn profile as we speak. So we have so much fun every Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. I hope you check it out. It streams live on this one and every college YouTube channel on the Locked On Network. So we, we have a really good time on there. All right, let's see. We get a question from... This is from Lamont who says, uh, he's got a couple questions here. Are there any players on Michigan State that we're interested in? Uh, yeah, and obviously Mel Tucker just fired. To Michigan State right now is a dumpster fire. I'm sure a lot of their players are going to hit the portal. Uh, he also asks, I keep seeing something about potential flips on X slash Twitter. Have you heard anything? All right, so let me talk about MSU first. And, okay, I've, I've done a little digging on their roster. I'm not an MSU expert. I haven't watched a whole lot of Michigan State this year. That's just, you know, not one of the teams that's been really high on my priority list to watch. But they do have some players that I like. Now, I don't know exactly which of their players are definitely going to jump into the portal. I know they've had a couple players jump in, including their long snapper. So I don't know if we need a long snapper for next year or what. Uh, so I don't know exactly who's going to leave, but I think the first player that I would look at if he did hit the portal, they've got a sophomore safety, Malik Spencer, leading their team in tackles. Looks really good. Miami would likely, remember next year, Miami's likely going to have to replace both Cam Kinchins and James Williams, who are probably both going to head to the NFL. So injecting some experience at that position would be big. Um, they've got uh, they've, they've got a handful of receivers who are off to a decent start, but I like their young receiver, Antonio Gates Jr., you know, son of the former NFL tight end. Uh, Jr. is averaging 25 yards per catch so far this year. Uh, they've got a cornerback in Charles Brantley, who I like. And, you know, I do like their running back, Nathan Carter, but I don't really feel like Miami's got a big need at that position. So I don't, if you guys, some of you may know the Michigan State roster better than I do. So if you have any suggestions on Michigan State players who may come available that Miami should look at in the portal, let us know in the comments below. would love to hear from you guys on that. We get a question. Oh and, oh, and he also asked us about potential flips on X. Yeah, I mean, Kane's Twitter. Kane, Kane's Twitter's been, uh, you know, rightfully so, 4-0 star, looking pretty good. Kane, Kane's Twitter's been uh, been pretty cocky already this year, and people keep uh, tweeting out these pictures of Kevin Beard. I know, I know, I don't know, man. Um, e Jeremiah Smith is obviously the guy that everybody talks about. I, I don't necessarily think anything is imminent there, but Miami is always working towards flipping that guy and 
something to watch. This is Jeremiah Smith related. There's been a lot of recent smoke about Miami trying to land Shamanad Madonna quarterback CJ Bailey, who is uh, he's currently, I think, an NC State commit. Uh, but he's obviously he and Shamanad are having a really, really great start to their season so far. And I think part of the thinking is a, they like that player at quarterback and B obviously landing the Shamanad quarterback probably help you flip Jeremiah Smith and certainly would help you keep Jojo trader and Zaquan Patterson, another Shamanad guy, although defensive, keep those guys locked in. So De definitely, definitely keep your eyes on the, the CJ Bailey situation. Cause if Miami were to flip him, that could be a sign that they're, you know, one domino closer to flipping Jeremiah Smith. Uh, we get a question from Mario in Corpus Christi, Texas, who says, Hey, what's the likelihood that the reason the tight ends haven't been involved more in the offense is to be able to add some new wrinkles to the offense for ACC play? Now, let me clarify this, Mario, because if Shannon Dawson hears me let that slide, he's going to be angry. The tight ends have been very involved in the offense, but just mostly as blockers, okay? So they haven't been very involved so far as receivers. Um, you know, maybe a wrinkle for ACC play, that could be part of it. But I think the bigger part of it is um, you've really been relying so far on two guys because Elijah Arroyo hasn't been healthy yet. Cam McCormick is 95% a blocking tight end. So that's that's what he does out there. He's had a couple of catches this year, but he's a blocking tight end. And then the other one who's played and played really well is Riley Williams. But Riley Williams is so young. I think by second half of the season, he's going to be getting big time catches left and right and breaking out. Uh, but he hasn't had a whole lot in the passing game yet just because he is so green. But Williams has really been blocking well. So I think if Elijah Arroyo had been available first four games, you would have had more of a passing threat downfield. You know, I'm not exactly sure why Jaleel Skinner is barely playing, but I think it has more to do with his blocking. Uh, so, you know, is it a wrinkle for ACC play? I don't know. I think it probably has a lot more to do with the personnel. Uh, get a good question here from Donnie Q, who says, do you see any glaring holes in Miami's 24 class of 2024 recruiting class? If so, who do we need to fill those holes with? Um, I think this is the last question I'm going to have time for today, by the way. So we'll have a lot more later on this week. Uh, I would like to add another interior defensive lineman to the class. Miami does have Artavius Jones and Dalen Russell so far, who we both like. But recruiting in the interior has been so light in recent years. You need another one, hopefully another blue chipper. Miami's missed on a bunch of five stars already and... It looks like Aiden Breland is probably going to pick Georgia this month. That's where the crystal balls are going now. So uh, now if Armando Blunt reclassifies to 2024 and comes a year early, that might be enough. Plus, Jameel Burroughs, the transfer from Bama, who I don't think it's going to play this year, should be ready to go and hopefully dominate next year. So I don't know if if uh, if Armando Blunt reclassifies, you might have enough there. But Miami obviously has been aggressively pursuing another defensive tackle. Uh, I think we also Miami needs to add uh, a, a top end, another top end cornerback in this class. I hope they can continue to make progress in possibly flipping Ellis Robinson from Georgia. And in a few days, Sione Lalea. Uh, from junior college is going to be announcing Miami is very much in the mix there with him. So hopefully the Hurricanes can get some good news because uh, that would obviously because Lalea is a blue chipper like that. That dude is a freak. He's great. Now, I think Miami, they're also trying to get another linebacker missed out so far on James Nesta and Chris Cole. Uh, I think that Miami is still potentially trying to flip Nesta from Oklahoma. And they're also trying to flip a Darius Hayes from Florida. So uh, another linebacker, cornerback, defensive tackle. Those are the big ones that I'm looking at right now. Um, so I appreciate you guys firing in awesome questions. We're going to answer more throughout the week. We're going to have the truth teller on tomorrow. We're going to have Brian Smith on on Wednesday. So buckle up for a big week as we lead up to this Georgia Tech matchup. Uh, make sure if you want to support the show, subscribe on our YouTube channel or the audio version, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey app, Google. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and we will talk to you guys again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.